Okay, so obviously this is a honey bee, but honey is not the only thing bees can make. We rely on honey bees for a third of the crops to pollinate them, a third of the crops that we consume. They are essential for our agriculture system, but we've come across a problem in the past few decades. Scientists and re researchers have found that since the 1990s, there's been a huge decline in the honeybee population. And this is a problem because around 35% of food crop production worldwide is dependent to some extent on animal pollinators, of which bees are a huge part. So in, in the 1950s, there were 5 million managed honeybee colonies in the United States. As of 2010, there's only 2.5 million. So the three main problems that honeybees are facing are industrial agriculture, parasites and diseases, and climate change. So industrial agriculture is mass scale farming, it's very efficient, um, high yields, minimal labor, uh, use of pesticides, and monoculture mono crops. And since agriculture occupies about 35% of the ice-free land um, on the earth, it, um, it has destroyed many bee habitats. And furthermore, the monoculture system has uh, lessened the diversity of the crops for the pollinators to a great extent, so it limits their food supply. Not to mention tilling, irrigation, removal of forests, these, these methods just destroy bee nesting grounds. So these are seven of the main pesticides that are used in agriculture. And the problem with pesticides is not only do they go on the plant, they can actually coat the seeds of plants and become systemic. So they can infiltrate the plant and grow uh, up in it. And they can actually get in the pollen. So when the bees take the pollen back to their hive and make the wax, the pesticides will be present in all throughout the um, the hive. So j just a few um, of the effects of these seven, of just these seven pesticides, impairs the medium-term memory and brain metabolic activity in bees, causes abnormal foraging behaviors, there's damaging effects on colony development, it stifles the development of the bees themselves, affects their walking behavior, um, increases the worker bee mortality, decreased success in foraging, impairs brain and mid-gut function. Uh, there's an increased chance of the bees just getting lost, not being able to find their way back to the hive and suffering premature deaths. Um, it affects their olfactory memory and their odor recognition, both functions of which are, are, are essential to their foraging. There's a reduction in learning performance as well as um, fewer queen bees per hive. So the second major problem are their parasites and diseases. And the two main parasites that are harming the bees are the Varroa destructor and the Nosema serenae. So this picture is the Nosema serenae. It's a single-celled parasite that gets on, on the bee and weakens it. And the second one is the Varroa destructor, which is actually a little mite that attaches to the bee and feeds off of its blood. And these, they, they can only reproduce inside beehives, so they rely on bees for their own survival. Um, they weaken the bees and they can spread disease. And eventually can destroy the entire colony if there's a lot of them. So the third major problem that bees face um, is habitat destruction and climate change. Um, increasing temperatures, change in rainfall patterns, uh, more erratic and extreme weather events um, can change the habitat of honeybees. In a recent study on honeybees in Poland, um, the bees respond to climate, changing climate by advancing the date of their first winter flight, the waking moment after winter. And the first the winter flight has actually advanced by one month over 25 years of observations. Um, research has suggested between 70 and 50% of pollinator species will suffer from food shortages under 
realistic scenarios of projected climate change, and some researchers have predicted a species range shift of 6.1 kilometers per decade towards the poles due to spring occurring 2.3 days earlier per decade. And these three problems, the parasites, the pesticides, and the, uh, um, um, the climate change, they, th these can all culminate in colony collapse disorder, which is a phenomenon in which the population of the bees in the colony reaches a critical point of whether there are some bees left, but the colony cannot sustain itself. And here's just an illustration um, to make it a little easier to, to see, see the effects of um, managed honeybee colony losses. It's a little bit harder to um, measure the extent of um, colony losses in the wild, but these are just managed colony losses. As you can see, Pennsylvania is suffering 60% um, mortality rates um, 2014 and 15. Now, bees provide a valuable ecosystem service, pollination, which is the process in which pollen is transferred to the female reproductive organs of a plant, thereby enabling fertilization to take place. Not all crops require pollination, but the majority greatly depend or greatly benefit from animal pollination. A 2007 study by an international team of agricultural scholars discovered that 87 crops worldwide employ animal pollinators, while only 28 can survive without them. Among the 87 crops, only 13 absolutely require animal pollination, while 30 more are highly dependent. The remaining crops would likely continue without bees with slightly lower yields. Now, if honeybees were to disappear forever, humans wouldn't go extinct, but we would lose a lot of food that make up a core part of many of our diets. Many groups have been campaigning to save honeybees for years. The California Almond Board, for example, says that without bees, the almonds simply wouldn't exist. The idea of losing a food as a direct result to the extinction of the honeybee is an alarming reality, a reality that doesn't just stop at the almonds. Cherries, blueberries, apples, avocados, and onions all greatly benefit from animal pollination. So without the honey, without the honeybee, we could say goodbye to apple pie, blueberry pancakes, and guacamole. Some foods, like coffee, have longer pollination windows, so they won't feel the absence of a honeybee as much as, say, cherries or apples. But if the, the, an insect doesn't pollinate the flower within a three to four day pollination window, the plant will not be capable of producing the coffee bean. With a decline in honeybees, there's a less likely chance a honeybee will come across a coffee flower in need. The global economic benefit of pollination amounts to 280 billion U.S. dollars. And in the U.S., Europe, and East Asia, the value of pollination can go up to $1,500 per hectare, or 100 acres. Without bees providing pollination, the U.S., European, and East Asian economies could potentially, could potentially be losing out on millions of dollars every year on just pollination alone. According to Bees Matter, a website that highlights the importance in maintaining the honeybee population, canola plant farmers have a productive partnership with honeybees. The nectar is great for honey production and its flowers have large quantities of pollen for honeybees to eat and spread. This shows the codependence that farmers and bees have on each other. And this relationship needs to continue in order for the food industry to survive and thrive. Simply put, no bees, no food, or at least a lot less food than we're used to being able to choose from. Uh, some social effects to the loss of bees and their pollination would be that bee pollen produces different proteins and compounds that strengthen your immune system. Um, one of the most po um, popular home remedies for a sore throat or a cold is a spoonful of honey or uh, a food with honey related products in it because it's an acting as a soother with the proteins that can make you feel better. Also it aids in skin care. I'm sure most if not all of us have used or seen someone use Bird's Bees Chapstick uh, which is one of the most popular skin and lip care uh, cosmetics in the world. Also a lot of honey is found or honey products can be used in skin lotion or your face wash because it's a natural skin softener and moisturizer. And bee pollen is a strong natural energizer. Uh, bee pollen contains the 
amino acids and vitamins needed for uh, an energy kick that you can get through the honey and the pollen itself. So with that, you're getting all the natural vitamins, acids, proteins that you need to really give you that extra start to the day. Some solutions to the pesticides, parasites, and habitat destruction would be ecological farming. And this would be the farm without the chemical intensive industrial agriculture. Uh, this would mean that the, paris the pesticides used wouldn't affect the bees as much and they could stay stronger and healthier. This has been used in Europe and has been making great strides to help pr uh, advance their bee pop population and affect the crops grown as well. Also would be to combat the varroa mite, which was talked about earlier, that feeds off the bees. This would be almost like introducing a web to the beehive, so when the bees can come in, it almost knocks the varroa mite off of them. It can almost act as a dog collar for a bee. And lastly is to feed the bees. Bees, like all other humans and animals, uh, work best under a full stomach. and when we wipe, getting away the grasslands and wetlands like as we are in the Midwest, we're getting rid of a major food source for them so they're not strong enough to combat the different parasites that are attacking them. So in conclusion, bees are not only there for their honey, but they're also a huge important factor for the world ecosystem as a whole.